Hello, YouTubers. This is Angela Logan on this warm and humid rainy Friday in the high 10, September 27th, 2019. Hope you all are well and hope you all have a great weekend. But right now, I want to give you a little bit of information on a true crime story. And this is for my true crime friends and fans who who just love to indulge in it, honey. Now, I know some of you may not be into true crime, and that's okay. You can bypass this video and get on to the next one I make. But right now, I want to bring you all a story about Mr. Stephen Avery. This is an update. I'm going to give you the name of the gentleman who has confessed to killing Miss uh, Teresa Hallback, and it's going to go something kind of like this. Okay, here we go. The gentleman who has recently confessed to, uh, to the crime of killing Miss Teresa Hallback. His name is Joseph Evans. He is currently in the uh, state of Wisconsin correctional facility for murder. He is accused of killing his wife back in 2008. So he is already in the system and has been charged with murder of his wife and he is now confessing to the killing of Miss Teresa Hallback, which Stephen Avery and his nephew, Brendan Dassey, were convicted of that crime. Now, mind you, uh, it is a wicked tale. The story itself, th this storyline played out on Netflix's The Making of a Murderer. So for those of you who do like true crime or even curious to the story of Mr. Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey, please turn into Netflix's Making of a Murderer because it is Surely juicy, honey. Surely juicy. And let me tell you, it's mind-blowing. It's baffling. It's all the crazy stuff of a movie. But the crazy part is, it ain't a movie. It ain't made for television. This actually happened to someone. No disrespect to the victim or her family. But it's got so many twists and turns, you don't know what to believe. Because naturally, making of the murderer tended to lean toward the fact that the police set up Mr. Uh, Avery in this case. And convicting of a murderer is being shot as we speak right now. It is in no way affiliated with the making of a murderer, but it is the prosecution's take on the case. And that will come out next year. So stay tuned for that uh, convicting of a murderer if you're interested in following the storyline. Okay, this is Mr. Evans, uh, Mr. Joseph Evans' version of what happened to Teresa Hallback. He said that he saw her on the property taking pictures of vehicles, and he hit her, I'm assuming by mistake. He panicked. He put her in the back of her RAV4, drove her up to Mr. Avery's property, looking for him for help. Mind you, he said he was drinking brandy and on pills. He went inside after consuming the alcohol and pills into Mr. Avery's trailer, which was unlocked, stole a rifle, came out, shot her, then put her back into the RAV4, which I'm not really understanding that correlation. But anyway, shot the lady, then took her and put her in the burn barrel that was on the property and burned her remains. Okay, naturally, there has been a reward in this case of $100,000. And um, I don't know who the person is that offered the reward, but Miss Zellner... Um, Miss Kathleen Zellner, Mr. Avery's attorney, had made that known of this month that there was a $100,000 reward. Well, you should know, honey, lo and behold, this Mr. Joseph Evans is trying to get the bag, honey. He is trying to get this money. And like I said, he's already serving a life sentence for killing his wife back in 2008. The crime of Miss Teresa Hallback took place in the winter of 2005. So let's just say that. Maybe he did do it. I don't know. Have to weigh the evidence to come to that conclusion. But the crazy thing is, uh, I don't know what to say about any of the shenanigans, but uh, I'm going to read to you what's going on with this money situation. Okay. He has written, he wrote the letter to Miss Zellner. She got out of her office last Saturday in her law practice of him confessing to the murderer. And basically what he's telling her that is, if you are serious about getting Mr. Avery out, you will need my help. He was requesting, uh, he said he would give a deposition of the killing 
of his participation in the alleged killing, he is asking for $13,000 as a down payment to get the ball rolling in him giving a deposition. And he needs that money so he can chill out in his cell and wait. Now, many of you are going to say, oh, boo-boo, oh, wait on what? But see, that's another story. We ain't going to even go there on that. He is also he is also requesting two hundred and fifty thousand dollars instead of the initial one hundred thousand dollars that was offered for the reward, and he basically is telling Miss Zellner, "Oh, don't get your panties in a knot. I'm not trying to screw you." He did offer a uh, deposit slip to her, I guess, in his letter to her in requesting this money to get the ball rolling and you know in giving his deposition and his version of the, of the alleged uh, crime. Or, well, his alleged participation in the crime. And so she sent on Twitter emojis, laughing emojis, I guess, alongside the deposit slip that he sent to her. Okay, here is what the story gets goofier and goofier and crazier and crazier. In 2016, Mr. Evans sent a letter to several news outlets claiming that while he was an inmate locked up, with Mr. Avery, that Mr. Avery confessed to him that he killed Teresa Hallback. Now, is that true? I don't know, but this story is, uh, that was reported by WBAJ in 2016. Now, mind you, Zellner has given out her commentary on this situation of the confession, and this is her response to the confession. She is saying to Mr. Avery's followers, and this was given on Tuesday, do not be discouraged. We have some very credible tips, and when we have them verified, we'll send them to the law enforcement. No more publicity stunts, no more deposits. So basically saying, don't none of you, don't no more of you come out the woodworks talking about what you did to Miss Hallback, and don't be sending no deposit slips and yah, yah, yah. Lord have mercy. This is a crazy situation I've never heard of, seen. I mean, this is just shenanigans. I want to make sure, you know, I'm reading everything correctly to you that was uh, reported. But, uh, oh, another thing I, I I did leave out of my notes. He did request a $2,000 payment, I guess, initially when he sent the letter. And then that's when it went on to, it went from $2,000 for the initial payment, I guess, for the first payment. And then it went to, 13000 for him to chill out in his cell. And then he wants 250000 for the reward money instead of the initial 100000 that's being offered by an undisclosed person. Okay, you know I'm about to get crunk right quick because this is so retarded and stupid. I got to take my uh, bifocals off because, you know, I'm going to give it to you 100 because you know how I do. I get full throttle with it. I don't know. Where this joker came from, I don't know is if there's any truth to the fact that he killed Miss Teresa Hallback. I don't know what to believe because I'm still about leaning toward the fact that Mr. Avery did something with that girl. I don't know if Brendan was involved. As I stated in my video before, I feel like he's a docile creature. He was a docile creature at that time. I could see how he would easily be coerced into committing the crime, but I really felt like he didn't. I still kind of wait teeter-tatter on Brendan's, the you know, the nephew's participation in the crime. But this new joker here, I think he's like everybody else. He's just jumping on a bandwagon. He's trying to get him five minutes of fame. So he already knows he's going to be doing life in prison for killing his wife. He's not coming out of there. So let me be comfortable while I'm in here. So he thinks, I'll make up this story that I killed this girl. They'll give me the money. And then I'll lay on Easy Street incarcerated, which is still crazy. Because let's say you did do it. Some states have laws where criminals are not allowed or prohibited from gaining any type of funds that pertain to a storyline, documentary, movie deal, book deal pertaining to a homicide. I don't know if Wisconsin has this law or not, but I have heard that in some states, a suspect or let's say a person who's been convicted of a crime cannot reap the benefits of telling a story 
about the crime. They can feel free to give interviews and their versions of the truths and half-truths of the story, but they cannot benefit from it financially. So we will see how this pans out. I'm sure Ms. Zellner is thinking, Lord have mercy, what's next? Because, honey, I'm saying it already, and I'm just somebody on the outside looking in. Now, did he do it? Did he hit her that day? But see, the thing that don't make no sense is you hit her. You went to the property to ask the guy for help, but yet you didn't call 911. Then you was drinking and popping pills. Then you broke into the man's house, stole the gun, shot the girl, burned her, put her in a barrel, and then took the car back to the other side of the property and put her up on the little ridge where they found the car. You did all that. When you could have just called 911 and said, hey, I was coming out this road, I didn't see her standing there, and I hit her by mistake, and then called 911. How about that? Ciao, bye. Till the next video. <laughs> Till the next video. Because you know this sounds just retarded. That's why I always say, when you hear a crazy story, repeat it as if you're not how can I say this? Just repeat the story verbatim how that person said it happened. And then ask yourself, how does that sound? If it don't even sound right when you repeat it a second time, then you know nine times out of ten, it didn't go down like that. Bye, Felicia. Lord have mercy. I will keep you all updated on this Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey shenanigans. And we'll see what's, what will happen. But I'm sure the plot is it, thickening. It is thickening. And it's going on and on. I see right now, it ain't stopping. And I'm sure the young lady's family, they're tired of hearing stories and versions and different things pertaining to the case. But as you see, it ain't going nowhere. And it ain't going nowhere no time soon. Till the next video, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.